Hello, I am Dina Fireball Bakowitz. And I am Franz Black Cloud Cayo. As you can see, the black clouds behind me in lovely Brooklyn, New York on this October day. And this show is All of Them, a conversation about everything. Franz, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about living your dreams and having people support your dreams, especially strangers who are now that, your friends. <laughs> what are the strangers or friends you haven't yet met? I thought that strangers were stalkers that you tried to avoid, but I guess <laughs> your, your, yours works too. Yours works too. If it wasn't for stalkers, I'd never get a date. That is also true. I've I've heard that from many women. Actually, I would not have been gotten married the second time, or actually both times, if I wasn't so aggressively stalkerish. Wait, does that sound good? I guess maybe uh, not. not. Got married, so you know the ends justifies the means. I, I guess my second my my current wife keeps on telling me that I tricked her, and that we were only supposed to be hangout buddies, and I was going to be her wingman uh and help her find dates and then we started dating nice so like bait and switch <laughs> I, um i guess in a sort of way i didn't know that i was baiting and switching i thought that we were on the same page but uh we were not well she you actually are came to yeah she actually came to our first date um getting dropped off by her by an actual date wow yeah, she had her date drop her off at my house. I mean, that says a lot about friendship though, right? Like, or partnership, says the single girl, I'm an expert on partnership. I, I mean, I am an expert on professional relationships, but all kidding aside, you want to have that basis of friendship and partnership for a romantic, lifelong marriage, whatever you call it, right? So they, so they say, because especially in a pandemic where you have no place else to go, making sure that you actually enjoy your partner as a human being kind of important now kind of important there's only so many other extracurricular activities or intracurricular activities you can do that uh would avoid actually having to address if you didn't like each other i'll take your word for it <laughs> well i'm only one of millions of people who are shacked up with someone and is looking at it like, thank goodness I like you, or this would be miserable. As opposed to other people like yourself who are like, I would take even miserable <laughs> with other people if I could have any type of human contact. I wouldn't take miserable. You know what? I, I agree. Like, I would love okay. to be with somebody and I am online dating, which is now literally online dating. It makes it a lot more difficult because before I would have been setting up, I'm in a new city. I've been here two weeks. I'm... I'm new meat in town. I'm meat, M-E-A-T and M-E-E-T. I am ready to get together. But with COVID, get together has a different connotation. I'm not sure I'm ready to get together in person with a bunch of strangers all of a sudden in this climate with the caseloads that, that are the way they are. Um, so it does make it more difficult, but I would still rather be by myself than be with someone who makes me miserable. And maybe that goes to your, you know, like pursue your dreams, pursue your dreams. <laughs> We have dramatic effect, people. Pursue your dreams. Beep, 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 announcement. Yes. yes. There you go. <laughs> We're very dramatic on this show. But it is about what are your dreams? Who do you want in that scene? And what are you willing to settle for? And what are you not willing to settle for? And I think, I'd, for me, I'd rather be alone than settle for someone who makes me miserable, which is why I've broken up with people over you know the course of a lifetime. Um, regretted breaking up with people. But... See, more drama. Once you say regret, break up with people, there goes the alarm. There should be a thought, yeah, an alarm bubble above us, alarm right? Bubble. Yeah. <laughs> like we are a West Indian DJ. But, the, but in the positive, sometimes, even in this time of separation, we find tribes that actually help support us. And a perfect example of that was last night one of our friends through comedy class, it was her birthday, and she asked everyone in the class, would you mind 
if I basically did my bucket list and perform a long set. We usually do five minute sets and she asked to do a 25 to 30 minute set, which to me is remarkable in and of itself. I'm just like, who's talking for that long? And she only started doing comedy six months ago. And she, she killed. In comedy world, that means like a mi sh everyone was laughing and thinking and reacting. Now, she is a professional actress, but being a professional actress and doing stand-up are very, very different. The There's skills, no second take. There's no third take. You're not following someone else's character and someone else's script. You're writing it. And the stuff she writes and the way she delivers it is brilliant and personal to her. Like you could have different actors or actresses performing the same role as you do in movies and Broadway and remakes, but you can't have someone else deliver your material because it's about you and your life and your perspective and your experience. And it was brilliant. She actually, we all gave her raves on our little email chat group afterwards. And um, I'm done now. I'm never doing comedy again because there's no way that I'm going to keep up with this woman who basically is the star of our class. But damn it's you. Damn you. A, it's not a competition. There's room for more than one on the stage. It's not, I mean, it's not a competition. Come on, it's the comedy world. No, come on. Like, there's room for more than one comic. That's why you have a show with, what did we have, 10 different people last night? It was a packed show. There might have been, yeah, there was about eight to 10 people on the show last night. Performers, and we had about 30 in the audience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we could, of course, we all compare ourselves, right? But it doesn't, it doesn't further anyone's career. And we support each other. That's the thing you were yes. saying, that she asked, it was a favor, could we support her for her birthday? And we all immediately said, of course. And we benefit. It wasn't like, oh my God, I'm going to waste a half an hour of your time, but please do it as a favor, which we would have done anyhow because we're friends and we support each other. But it was a benefit because we all got to listen and learn and enjoy. And, and yet your style is not the same as hers and my style is not the same as hers. We're equally talented and equally different. Equally different. Yeah. That's today. Equally different. And also it showed what you can do when you actually commit to a craft. And like, like we said earlier, we've been together for probably about six months and she had never done stand up before, but like you said, as an actress and she had been working on her craft week to week to week and, and trying new things out. I, it was interesting to see because all of the different pieces that she told during that 25 to 30 minute set, we had all heard in different iterations during the six months. She was able to finally piece those things together um, as one flowing narrative. I actually had a friend of mine chatting with me on online as she was going, because I said, oh, the last person is brilliant. You're really going to enjoy her. And he said, okay, cool. And as he went through, he said, it didn't seem like a set. It felt like her just telling you a story. And that's when you know you've nailed the actual performance. Because he was just like, this doesn't seem like I just came into a comedy club. This felt like someone was you know, writing a story for me that I wanted to follow along all the way to the end. Yeah. And that's how you know that, and that's her style. She is, she gives very insightful and descriptive um, visions and narrations that you're like, oh, I hadn't thought about it that way. Or, oh, I'm peeking into the background of someone's life. Um, and, and it doesn't feel like too little or too much is like Goldilocks, just right. That's where we're getting. <laughs> oh my God. But then that's what comedy is. It's insights into life, your life, other people's lives, life in general. It's insights into experiences and a different perspective and a different take. Like I never thought of it that way. Or how did she piece those two things together? And that's something mm -hmm. you and I do a lot of. We find connections that other people don't see. 
And a lot of comics do that. Like Jerry Seinfeld, right? The way he talks, it's a certain style of comedy. He takes just things that could be considered very banal and he makes them funny. Other people will take the most twisted, ridiculous premises and make them funny or normalize them. And it, it, just, it, was, it was really amazing to see someone else's style work and succeed mm -hmm. and how, as you said, she put the work in because yes, raw talent, but also working at comedy and then all of her training as a professional actor also come into play. And I know for me, I've been thinking about this. I want to do much more in the arts and entertainment. I want to do more performing and writing and producing and directing beyond the business and career coaching that I do. And the more I focus on it and the more I connect with people who are in that space, the happier I am, the more I feel like this is what I was meant to do and this is how I can serve others as well. So whether it's on a comedy stage or delivering a workshop for creative people or working with creative people on their brands, we do, we support each other and learn from each other. And it is about the community and the collective. Absolutely. And you don't even know where something can lead. I think I, I teased that I have been doing a, I came onto a role of producing a talk show recently. Not this talk show, another talk show. Another talk show uh, called um, Mike and Donnie. It's on Fox Soul every weeknight, 11 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, but Fox Soul TV .net? Fox no, Fox Soul TV. Yes, Fox, Fox Soul dot, yes. And, or in the app, the Fox Soul app. But what's been interesting about it is, and I was explaining this to my wife earlier, was that I feel like doing our comedy class and us doing this show on a weekly basis help prepare me for that role. Because each week, I, every week and every weekday, actually, I am writing a new set of parameters for the host to actually delve into and my particular style of comedy which is i take one subject and drill the hell out of it <laughs> you do it well you do it so well <laughs> and i you know like certain comedians they'll say i'm gonna hit on these five different topics and jim mandrinos who is our our teacher will be like nope franz doesn't hit five different topics he hits one really, really hard. Yeah. <laughs> and so for this for this talk show, I basically find one topic each day and we go into it really, really hard. And what I've gotten feedback from the other writers is thank you. This makes the show feel more focused every day. And I'm just like, haha, I'm cheating. Because this is what I would have done anyway. <laughs> this is my this is my writing style anyway. So thanks that you glommed onto it, but really I wouldn't be able to do 15 topics per day. Right. But isn't that great? Like that's when the fit, it makes a difference. Your style and the show style and the other writers are responding to each other. That's a collaboration. Mm -hmm. That's it, it may not always work that way. Like I've worked for companies and clients that I just thought, oh my God, I could be doing so many more things with my time. This is not what I was meant to do, but finding what you're meant to do and who you're meant to do it with, whether it's project by project or on an even larger basis, isn't that rewarding? It, it is. It actually is. And I'm enjoying it. And um, it wasn't what I had planned at all, but it's interesting that what I had not planned actually became so important for me to move forward in the in this venture and so it's been fun uh the last few shows that i've written have been highly highly successful in terms of engagement and and interaction with the guests and the hosts and the audience members so i'm i'm feeling pretty good about it and it makes me feel more comfortable as I'm writing comedic sets now. Cause I'm like, oh, this actually works for me. I'm feeling more at ease being able to just say, you know what? I know this is good stuff. It Let is. me do my style and keep doing that and enjoying it. I'm supposed to do a birthday party tomorrow night. 
Were you the hired entertainment? That's great. I'm hired entertainment. Well, hired. I'm doing it as a favor. Come on. No one's paying me yet for that type of stuff. And they should, though, because you were hilarious last night like that. It was that natural flow. It just, it felt like, okay, our audience may not know this because they don't get to talk to you every day like I do. But I know your personality. And when you just start going off on a topic, whether or not you've thought about or written about it, it just comes out and it's natural and it's impactful and it's funny and it's insightful. So, yes. Thank you. You, You're a bit biased, but thank you. That's my friend. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, so tomorrow, but, but here's the rub. I did not know that the show tomorrow is supposed to be 15 to 20 minutes. Ooh, yay. Which is much longer than the five minute sets that we do. And everybody who knows me on our sets, I cheat and I always do eight. Um, okay. <laughs> I just, did you, let me just say something to you and to anyone who's listening. I know you, we talk every day and you're like, but I have so many things to say. I can't distill it down to five minutes. I have 15 topics. And I'm like, pick one. <laughs> yeah, every time. Just pick five one. Minutes. That's what editing is for. You can talk about the other 14 topics another day. Now you have 15 minutes and you're catching. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because I've been around you so long. I'm finding the actual <laughs> part, part drag and convention about. Yes. Oh, but no. Always my <laughs> <laughs> well, it, the show is centered around you, Dina. Always remember that. The show is about you. The show tomorrow night? <laughs> no. <laughs> I could do that as well. Make I it could... all. Please, just talk about me at your friend's birthday party. I'm sure they'd love it. Yeah, they'd be like, who is this Dina <laughs> woman? And <laughs> why mother... are we talking about her? <laughs> yeah, your my mother... mother loves you. Yeah. I love your mother, too, and I, we've never met. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, so that's going to be interesting. And I actually am going through all my old material going, okay, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a splash of this. And we'll try to all weave it together into one big thing. Of course, she doesn't want it to be too political, which I said, ha, ha, ha. Have you met? (laughs) What is she expecting? You're going to talk about dating? (laughs) Exactly. You hate Adam. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll talk about pets. <laughs> no, no, no. Too, well, what does she mean by, too, so that's interesting, right? We go back to Goldilocks. Too much, too little, just right. Mm-hmm. What, what are the boundaries? I'm going to try to incorporate more of my personal life in there. Okay. Um, to talk about just the family life, my son, the mix, the blended family, how my wife is handling it, all of those things, and then how that relates to the to the larger world at hand, um, which I think could be a good blend. I think I saw a couple of things from my older sets that I was just like, oh, I haven't I haven't done that in a while. Why haven't I done that? I actually like that set, and but it's because I'm always trying to find something new to talk about. For our, for our classes and for our weekly shows, because I just don't feel like repeating those. This person and her friends don't have never seen me perform ever. So I could easily go in on a number of different topics. I, I might even pull out the Black Friend uh, piece. Ooh, that's a good piece. You have a lot in Juneteenth and the products mm-hmm. and the And also I remember when we first started writing together and giving each other feedback. And one of the things I said was, I want to hear more about your family. I want to hear about your background. It's interesting. It's different. And you were doing, I think, only that. And at one point you're like, no, but I really want to talk about the political. And that's where you get all fired up. But there's still room to blend the two and take parts of it and transition it. You can make transitions. Oh, everyone loves a good transition. Family to friends to black friends to full politics. Yes. And someone who did great transitions was our friend last night. Yes. And so definitely want to congratulate her. We love supporting her. And as we go further down this comedic road uh, with each other, we can all benefit from that collective support. That's a good way to end the show. Collective support, follow your dreams, and make fun of your family. Every time. Family's the best. All right, Dina, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.